Welcome to the American Dream, a show that started right here in San Diego, America's finest city, that now spans positive media all across the country, real stories in real neighborhoods. Hi, I'm your host, Craig Sewing, and here's the American Dream. Welcome to the American Dream, a real show, not a reality show. The real estate, the lifestyle, the culture. It's not just about what you're living in, but the community you're going to live in. It's the American Dream. Welcome to Coastal Virginia, a captivating region that blends the allure of pristine beaches, rich history, and a vibrant cultural experience. Nestled along the eastern coastline of the United States, a unique tapestry of natural beauty, seaside charm, and artistic endeavors. We are your American Dream TV hosts, Lonnie and Heather Bush. We invite you to join us as we embark on a journey to discover two iconic Virginia Beach landmarks, the Neptune, King Neptune statue, and the Artery District. Our first stop brings us to the heart of Virginia Beach, where the magnificent King Neptune statue overlooks the Atlantic Ocean. We are joined today with Kit Choke, retired Navy veteran and now president of the Virginia Beach Neptune Festival. Founded in 1974, the Neptune Festival has grown from one event in the beginning to now over 40 diverse events a year. 400,000 people attend this event each year. Kit, we know all the wonderful, amazing things that the Neptune Festival does for the city. What about the impact that it has on the nonprofits and the you partnerships bet. that you guys come alongside with people with? You bet. So Lonnie, we call that our Beyond the Boardwalk program. So here at the Virginia Beach Boulevard, but this goes out into the community. And that program allows us to use the stage, if you will, in front of 400,000 festival attendees to take nonprofits that maybe are, are pretty local and don't have the resources or the platform. And they come out here for free during Boardwalk Weekend where it amplifies their voice and hopefully it amplifies their impact and creates better mission success. That's awesome. Well, listen, you guys do a fantastic job. I know the city of Virginia Beach loves you. We love you guys, and I can't wait till this year's event. So we really started at the end of what is considered Virginia Beach's gateway to the oceanfront for inland residents. And now we're getting ready to do some shopping after visiting Chef Jesse. Hey, thanks for joining us, Chef Jesse. So I know that you and Ashley and the boys have such a big heart for our community and Virginia Beach as a whole. So what was your drive behind creating the Artery District? The, the Artery um, was founded in 2019. And we actually, it started kind of because of Aloha Snacks, just the Ohana way, you know, all built around family. And, um, you know, we were a restaurant you know, for, for everyone, you know, it was like blue collar and white collar and kids, you know, and older folks. And as everyone started coming in, we started just seeing it grow and, and other businesses wanted to get involved. And then the artery came up. We actually now have um, 40 uh, constituents all tied in together to the artery district. So, so that brings me to why Aloha Snacks? What was your like dream and what were you thinking of and what did Ashley say? Well, you know, the wife, you know, she was, she was trying to just try to punt that idea for a little bit and until I'd finally convinced her. And after I'd read that, that book, uh, Blue Ocean Strategy, you know, Red Ocean, there's a lot of competition. Blue Ocean, there's no competition at all. And um, there is nothing like this here in Virginia Beach. And why not? Well, I mean, we're, you know, a quarter mile from the ocean front. Uh, it's a direct correlation of Hawaii and everyone that lives here um, to Virginia Beach. and. So we just felt like, you know, slinging out some fresh fish, um, you know, some ahi, some salmon poke, tying in our southern roots with all the farms down here in Pongo, um, with some fried green tomatoes, and it just seemed like it was really fun. Running a business, we know very well, it's very hard to manage um, life and family and balance what you're giving out and still have enough for, for your people, and I see you do that every day, so I just commend you for all of that good stuff. You and Ashley, you're knocking it out of the ballpark. Heather, bless you so <laughs> much. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us as we share a little bit of Coastal Virginia with you. We hope you'll make plans to visit or move soon. We have housing for everyone from modern lofts to beachy bungalows and waterfront properties so you can easily access water sports. We are Lonnie and Heather Bush with Lonnie Bush Real Estate selling coastal Virginia. 
at American Dream TV. Till next time, we're out. Welcome to the American Dream. I'm your host, Chris Kaiser, and this is the Mermaid City, Norfolk, Virginia. So in the spirit of all this naval history, today we're gonna to visit the Nauticus Museum and the Battleship Wisconsin. So come on, let's go inside. We're here today with Ren West, Director of Development and Marketing at Nauticus. Ren, could you tell us a little bit about Nauticus and the Nauticus Foundation? Yeah, so Nauticus is a maritime discovery center. We're located in downtown Norfolk, right along the Elizabeth River. Um, we have a main museum, which focuses on telling the stories of the maritime environment, the maritime industry, and the military. We use um, several assets to do that, which include the battleship Wisconsin, which is the largest and last battleship built by the U.S. Navy, as well as our amazing sailing program, where we take students and adults out to sail and explore the Elizabeth River. And last but not least, we're home to Virginia Virginia's only cruise terminal. We serve the community um, with different programs and education and lots of great things. Thank you Thank for you. joining me today and I look forward to seeing you soon. And if you want to learn to sail, Nauticus is the place to come. I'm here with Sarah Linden Brooks, who's the director of Sail Nauticus. Sarah, tell us a little bit about the program. So Sail Nauticus is located right here on the Nauticus campus. It is a community sailing center that is focused on getting individuals out on the water. We run an after-school program for Norfolk Public School middle school students that focuses on leadership, STEM development, and uh, citizenship. And it's a wonderful program right here on our Harbor 20s. Incorporated in 1705, Norfolk has a storied history dating back to the 16th century. We can't overlook the huge naval presence here. Norfolk is home to the world's largest naval station, supporting the largest concentration of U.S. naval forces anywhere. We're standing here on the decks of the battleship Wisconsin, BB-64, and I'm here with Keith Nitka, who's the battleship operations manager. Keith, can you tell us a little bit about this historic vessel? Absolutely, thank you, Chris. Thanks you for being here this morning. So Battleship Wisconsin is the last battleship built by the United States Navy, uh, starting with number one, BB-1, BB uh, finishing with BB-64. Uh, Wisconsin is one of the four Iowa-class battleships, the, uh, the last battleships put to sea by the United States Navy, the largest ships uh, that, were in the, that were in the world at the time in the 1940s. Battleship of Wisconsin turns 80 years old next April. Uh, but in those 80 years, she saw 14 years of service to this great nation. And in those 14 years were three wars, World War II, the Korean conflict, and then Desert Shield, Desert Storm. And I was a crew member on board during Desert Storm. Oh, oh. Thank you for your service. Thank you very much for your support, sir. Hey Lauren, how are you? I'm good. Welcome to 552 Mowbray. Oh, thank you. It's nice to meet you. Isn't it lovely? The barrel ceiling. Oh, it's amazing. It's just absolutely incredible. Well, walking you through this 1910 home, where you have about 6,500 square feet. Wow. You have a living room on your right, a morning room on your left. Okay. Okay, there are four working fireplaces in the houses. That has one, this has one, and two sets of stairs. Okay. Okay, you've got the stairs for well, your houses house. Houses built in 1910. I had two sets of stairs. <laughs> you got it. One for the, the fence folks and one for us commoners. This is a fitting place for us to end our tour in this mahogany laden library. That's uh, beautiful. Chris, it's been such a pleasure working with you. Thank you for showing me this amazing home, Lauren, and I look forward to working with you in the future. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Please join me next time in Norfolk, and here's to your American dream. This is Cynthia Hauer, your host for American Dream TV, and we're back in Georgetown today to interview my good friend and architect, Christian Zapaka, about restoring and designing houses in Georgetown, which is a historic district. Oh, here he is, 
Yes. Hey, Cindy. Kristen. How are Good you? Good to, nice see, to you. see you. Yes, indeed. So, Welcome to my new offices. Uh, We've got our sign up now. And just about a year ago, we acquired it as one building for our growing practice here in Georgetown. Hey, let's go in and talk about indeed. it and see what yes. you did. I love the fact that you've just created this like a home. So Christian, just a little bit about him, uh, studied with the world-renowned architect Michael Graves at Princeton, and I think he also apprenticed with him. Outside, we have cobblestone streets that still have uh, cable car tracks. I'm having quite a bit of fun in our new offices here on Peace Street after practicing over 20 years here in Georgetown. And indeed, Michael is a great influence on me. He is the one who taught me to learn to play the scales. And this house we renovated recently and wanted to really make it look and feel like a house because that's what we designed. the second floor where we have our main oh, working my space. my God, I love this room. It had been a jumble of little offices and uh -huh. we just opened it all up. New flooring, new trim, fresh paint. We made this private office using 19th century stable doors so you get light through but can close off for privacy. And then you see, of course, all good architects have lots of books. We have the original fireplaces in the house. We updated these windows by giving them a very nice trim detail. As you can see, I love every aspect of design, even interiors, uh, furniture and objects and mixing new and old. Always keeping it fresh, but always understanding history. I also wanted to ask you, Christian, about working with a fine arts commission because this is why Georgetown still has its, its charm. It's very challenging. What's great about Mission of Fine Arts, Old Georgetown Board, is that it preserves the historic neighborhood without making it slavishly imitative. So in other words, it's okay to bring in new design, even modern design, mm -hmm. modern addition on the back of an historic house. The Georgetown Board's mission is not to prevent work from happening, but to ensure that good design continues. It's a living, working neighborhood. Which is wonderful. And Cindy, this is the architect's studio on the top floor. And this is my brother Alan's. Oh my God, another Zapatka. There are four Zapatkas in this office, so this is really a family that business. That is correct. Right? Alan's an architect as well and the VP of this organization. Oh, that's great. And lots of light in here. Did lots you of natural light from skylights, windows front to back. It's a mix of old and new and models of houses that have been built or not necessarily built. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Cindy, this is a remarkable example of the variety of houses that you see on one block. This middle brick house is classic early 1800s Georgetown Federal. Right across the street is a fantastic example of an 1870s development right here in Georgetown. Five houses built all at once with the central house having the most prominence at the roof line. And it's also an example of Second Empire architecture, which is quite rare from the 1870s, 1880s. This is a very important intersection in Georgetown at 33rd Nose Street. It's a real mix of periods of architecture. This big corner house, this big brick block of a house was built by a prominent Georgetown builder in the 1860s. Thank you, Christian, for uh, joining me on today's episode of ADTV, and thank you for sharing all your wonderful knowledge about historic Georgetown and your architecture background and experience. It's been fascinating. And thank this you. is Cynthia Howard saying goodbye. Thank, you, thank you for joining me on this episode of ADTV, and we'll see you next time. Welcome to American Dream TV. My name is Erica Terry with Integrity Plus Network. We are going to look at the historic Longwood Manor in Brookville, Maryland, and I'd love for you to come inside with me. Come on. Uh, 
I am here with my friend and neighbor, Nancy Arthur, who is the owner of this beautiful Longwood Manor. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for letting me come and see your beautiful home. I love coming here. As you already know, I get to spend a lot of time here. Yeah. But I wanted to talk to you about what made you decide to buy this historic home. That's a great question, Erica. We were looking for a plantation home, a farmhouse in a neighborhood. And we needed a place for our children to attend high school, walking distance preferably, and we wanted neighbors. What are some of the special things about the home that really caught your eye when you first toured it? Well, I would start with the high ceilings. Fireplaces, we have three fireplaces. How many bedrooms are there here? We have six bedrooms and two suites, so eight. That's wonderful. Yeah. And I heard a rumor that um, Thomas Jefferson may have actually stayed in this home. I would confirm the rumor to be true. The man who built the house was Thomas Moore, and he was great friends with Thomas Jefferson. They did a lot of uh, building and designing of the home together, as you'll see the um, features in the home as we tour. Great friends. And you have done an incredible job, your husband Rick and yourself, at preserving the beautiful colonial aspects of the home and then also updating things. And that's just what I absolutely love about this home. The courtyard is another area where I love to, to sit and hang out. Yes. And then Nancy's also going to show us the bees. Yes, yes. the apiaries. So let's go and take a look around the house. Here we are in the gorgeous parlor. Tell me uh, of the original things in the home. What, what else is original to this home? Um, I, I can definitely tell that the floors are original and they're still in beautiful shape. The floors are definitely original. They've been refinished several times. The fireplace mantles, of which we have three, are all hand carved uh, by a craftsman of the day. The moldings around the windows and how they're set into a pocket are all um, a sign of the colonial days. The double hung windows even, um, as far back as the 1800s, the hinges uh, on the windows and the latches on the doors were all made on site back in the 1800 colonial days. Thank you so much, Nancy, for letting me see your home. You're very welcome. And I would love to see where Thomas Jefferson was rumored, rumored. to have slept when he came to visit. Let's go. Let's go. This is the guest suite of the Longwood Manor home where apparently Thomas Jefferson actually slept here. It has the original wood flooring in here. It's got the gorgeous wood paneling on the walls. Everything is as it was back then, except for electricity, of course. But who knows, maybe Thomas Jefferson actually touched this wall. Not only is the interior of this home exquisite, outside, it's outstanding. Come with me to look at the back patio. Thank you for joining me on this edition of American Dream TV. Thank you to Nancy and Rick Arthur for showing me their beautiful historic Longwood Manor. My name is Erica Terry in Brookville, Maryland. Until next time. Welcome to the American Dream. We are your hosts for today's show. I'm Sanam Alhui Jahandar. And I'm Sadaf Alhui with Aloha Homes of Keller Williams Realty. We are here today at the city of Winchester, Virginia, where we would be taking you inside of the Ryko kitchen and bath newest showroom, where we'll be taking the tour of the facility and see what they have to offer. Let's go in. This is Jim Grace, Vice President of Marketing here at Ryko Kitchen and Bath, and he's going to be one of our guests today and going to give us some uh, information behind what all goes on here in the showroom. Can you tell us how long has Ryko Kitchen and Bath been in business? Yes, actually, Ryko has been in business since 1952. We actually recently celebrated our 70th year in business. 
Amazing. And uh, we're here today in our 24th showroom. We have showrooms from Philadelphia down to uh, the North Carolina area. And this will be our 11th showroom in Virginia. We have awesome. a really strong presence in the state. Does Ryko Kitchen and Bath only help retail customers? No, we actually also partner with all of the trades. We have a strong relationship with contractors, builders, uh, property management, multifamily and commercial. We offer a variety of products and services that fit every segment of the market and that combined with our expertise in the industry makes us a, a great partner to all of those trades. Thank you for having us today. Thank you for your time and we appreciate you sitting down with us. Um, now, if that's okay with you, could we walk with one of your designers, Kristen Daskalovitz, uh, who is a good friend of mine as well, if you can walk through the showroom? and she can give us the updates on what is the newest style. Absolutely, let's go. Wonderful. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Sarah. So good to see you. So good to see you. you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for coming to see our new showroom here. Of course, here this is lovely. I can't wait to see it all. All right. So this, this kitchen, to me, it's wonderful. I love the different color cabinets. I love the quartz counter uh, backsplash yeah. and countertop. Can you tell us a little about it? I'd love to. So this is the first display you see when you walk into our showroom. Um, we wanted to just uh, showcase something a little different than the typical whites and grays and very neutral colors that mm, you're seeing. I love the whole um, This is a naughty alder and a warmer tone. Mm -hmm. And personally, my favorite part of this kitchen is the full height quartz backsplash. Awesome. And this here is uh, one of my favorite Kohler sinks. It has all kinds of different accessories in it. Lovely. And we actually call this one the tuxedo kitchen. It's very sleek and contemporary. Um, my favorite part about this kitchen, we tried to load up the cabinets with as many accessories as possible. So we have trash pullouts with cutting board inserts. Oh, wow, that's interesting, and yes. And spice racks, and so it's all just tons of accessories, a knife block, utensil trays. In addition to cabinetry, we do also carry a large range of appliances from uh, Whirlpool to KitchenAid, and we have um, this nice sleek KitchenAid hood here and a KitchenAid microwave drawer. So in addition to uh, kitchens, we also do uh, bars. You can do a nice coffee bar. You can do a traditional bar with uh, wine coolers. And so in the back of our showroom here, we have our vanity and bathroom section. We wanted to showcase the Jeffrey Alexander line, which are furniture, freestanding furniture style vanities. And mm. it also shows all the different uh, mm -hmm. tiles and flooring and textures that we can offer our clients. Now we're here in Old Town Winchester, which features a pedestrian mall, bursting with outdoor cafes, shops, historic attractions, and fam family-oriented activities throughout the year. I would like to thank each and every one of you for watching us, and I look forward to seeing you at our next episode of American Dream. Bye. Bye. everyone, I'm Chevelle Welsh, your host for this episode of The American Dream. I'm so excited to be here today and share my very own charm city with you. So follow along and I'll show you why everyone loves Baltimore. Later today, we'll head to a Federal Hill hotspot, Shoddy's Point, and see what owner Christie's serving up for us. Then we'll walk across the street and we're gonna take a tour of a renovated historic row home. Let's get started. I get asked all the time, what's so special about Baltimore? For me, that's easy. Location, affordability, and proximity to the Chesapeake Bay. Oh, but that's not all. Baltimore's home to two professional sports teams, the Orioles and the Ravens. Getting around Baltimore is easy. You can hop on a water taxi and be on the other side of the harbor in just minutes, or you can walk up the street and visit one of our beautiful stadiums, a historic national park, or have some great Maryland seafood. But that's not all. Baltimore is steep in history and architecture. 
tourists and history buffs can't get enough. Today we're here at historic Federal Hill Park, which has panoramic views of our inner harbor. And just across the harbor is home to the U.S. Constellation Warship and our National Aquarium. Baltimore is known for its architecture. We have beautiful cobblestone streets and charming brick row homes, some of them dating back to the 1800s. That's where Baltimore gets its name, Charm City. Hello everyone, we're here at our first stop, Shoddy's Point. Hey Christy, thanks so much for having us Hi, today. Cheryl. Thank you for coming by Shoddy's Point. I love the food here at Shoddy's, and I'm hoping today you're going to share some of your favorite seafood dishes with us. But first, I want to know why you love Charm City. I actually love Baltimore so much because it's really like a small town in a big city. Everyone knows one another here. We all look out for one another. We love our hometown sports teams, the Ravens, the Orioles that are doing so well this year. We love our live music scene in Baltimore and definitely our seafood. Oh my gosh, this looks great. What are you sharing with us, Henry? Today we're gonna to be featuring our cream of crab soup made with colossal gum crab meat. And this is our Eastern Shore all golf shrimp, peeled for you, ready to go with the sauteed onions. Your place is a neighborhood favorite for sure, and I appreciate you having us here. Lisa and I are here at 635 East Ford Avenue in the heart of Federal Hill. I'm so excited to share this listing of ours with you. This property is not only a renovated masterpiece, but it's also an income producing Airbnb. Let's explore. If you're buying this property, it's for two reasons. It's an income producing investment property and has outstanding finishes. Let's check out the beautiful kitchen and the professional Thermidor appliances. Lisa, what's your favorite feature here at 635 East Ford Avenue? For sure, the two-story rooftop deck with the harbor view. Definitely. Yeah, let's go check it out. Thank you for joining me here in Baltimore, Maryland. And remember, whether you're a sports fan, a history buff, or you just love the Chesapeake Bay, Baltimore's a great place to make memories and call home. I hope you enjoyed today's show, produced from America's finest city, but shot in the heart of your neighborhoods. Don't forget positive media when the world really needs it. Follow us on social media at the American Dream TV. See you next time. In the meantime, cheers to your American dream.